Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be going over the pros and cons of Camtasia and whether it is worth it to purchase this editing software. Alright, so I get a lot of questions from people asking me what type of editing software do I use for our YouTube channel? And pretty much the only software that we use for our YouTube channel is Camtasia. Now I have tried other editing softwares and sometimes I do use other more advanced softwares for things that Camtasia cannot do, but for 95% of the time, it's Camtasia. So I'm just going to be going over the pros and the cons of this software and just let you know from a real perspective what's good, what's bad, and whether this software is right for you and if you should purchase it. First, I'm going to start off with what's possible with Camtasia and the range and diversity of the different videos that you can create with this software. So this software is very user-friendly and very easy to use in my opinion. I've looked at other softwares, for example, like Adobe or Sony Vegas, and it's a lot more confusing when you get in there in the dashboard. So even though it's very basic and very easy to use, you can create some really cool videos. So here are the different types of videos that we've personally created with Camtasia. The first one here is just like a regular talking head type video. Now for this kind of a video, we have the webcam set up. It's basically the setup that's happening right now. You just have like a webcam, the microphones right here, and you have like two small lamp lights, and then you just record using the Camtasia software when you press the record button. This is just a talking head video, so it's there's nothing else really happening. Uh, there's not much editing going on. You have things popping up like pictures on the sides here. There's some small animations happening in this video and you can see there's gonna about to be three pictures that pop up on the screen. This is like all this stuff is really easy to use in Camtasia. Dragging the effects on the pictures and the animations that you want. It's not hard to create these kinds of effects. The next type of video that you can create with Camtasia is like a screen capture screen record. So you can see that there's me in the bottom right corner and the screen on my desktop at the same time. A lot of people ask, how do you do this? How do you get like a video of you and your screen at the same time? Because there are people who still like actually have a physical camera and they have it like right here and they try and record their screen but you can actually record within your screen and then have you on the webcam as well so that can be done uh, through Camtasia because it is a also a screen record software the next type of video that we do in Camtasia that we edit are these DSLR type videos. So I use a DSLR camera, which is not a webcam. It's like an actual physical, bigger, heavier camera. And you can get, you know, more advanced with having better picture with these types of cameras. It's a lot better quality than a webcam. So you can take your footage from this camera, import it into Camtasia. It will be fine to use, it can handle it and you can edit it within there. There are other things that you can do like small color corrections, editing the sound, and that kind of thing. You can also do the same with GoPro type footage. So this was filmed on my GoPro Fusion and you just take the extract the footage from the Fusion and it can handle it as well on the Camtasia software and you'll be able to edit vlogs from your DSLR or your GoPro cameras. Another cool thing is that I've been able to use Camtasia to edit a bunch of Arit's music videos. So if you don't know who Arit is, she is my business partner. She is the other person on this channel. She does videos as well, but she's also a singer and I use Camtasia to edit her music videos. We film them in a variety of different ways, whether it be the DSLR, GoPro, um, cell phones, green screens, and then I import it all into Camtasia and edit it within there. Now here are some examples 
of her music videos that we've been able to create. So this was a song Confident by Demi Lovato. And this entire thing was edited in Camtasia. I'll just fast forward a little bit here so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see I've got colors going on, I've got three of a wreaths going on, and that is a certain effect uh, where you duplicate the same kind of person. So in this video, she's actually in each of those spots, but we managed to put them together to make it look like there's three of her happening at the same time. Here is another one of her music videos. This one we did with green screen and I did a lot of playing around with uh, shapes and animations. Made it like a fun video. I'll, sh I'll play a little bit here. This one took a while to edit, I'll tell you that. So you can see there's a lot happening here. I'm using shapes, I'm using a read on the green screen. I've filmed her a bunch of times. Uh, she's popping up on the corners here. There's lots of things happening on here and it's cool because, you know, you can go as basic as doing like a talking head video, but then you can do something intricate like this. And the last music video I want to show you is of a cover that she did by Say, S it's Say Something by Justin Timberlake. And what I mainly want to show you is this kind of effect, this writing effect. This took a very long time for me to do, but I have to say that it was worth it to film. So you guys can see the effect here, and it's like a drawing writing effect. So you can get pretty unique and creative with the types of videos that you can do. You can go really professional and then you can go really artsy in your videos. So as you can see, there's a lot of different types of videos that you can edit within Camtasia. It's all dependent on your creativity. So I'm just gonna go through a little bit of the features here in the actual dashboard of Camtasia. So I'm gonna start off here at the annotations and they have a whole bunch of different types of callouts that you can use different types of text. I use these all the time in my videos for like pop-ups when I want to put like a message on the screen. And I usually stick with these kinds, but they have a lot of other different kinds of shapes that you can use. And there are other arrows, lines, shapes that you can use. A cool thing is they do have a blur and highlight effect, but I will say that they don't have um, a tracking blur. So what that means is if you have something that you want blurred on the screen, like let's say a person's face, you can blur it at that time frame, but it's not going to follow that person if they move. So this blur effect works best if the thing on the screen that you're blurring isn't moving around. So I use it a lot when I'm signing into websites or I'm typing in some personal information on the screen then the blur effect works well, but if I wanted to track and blur someone moving on the screen, then it wouldn't be able to do that. They don't have that feature right now. You have these things called sketch motion, where when you use it on the screen, it will actually draw on the screen and you can play around with how fast or what kind of, it, you can modify the shape and thicken the shape as well, the line, and it will actually draw on the screen. So it's a cool effect, like if you're wanting to point something, you can have, instead of the arrow just popping up as is, it will be drawn on the screen while it plays. 
Next are transitions. They have a lot of different types of transitions. Now when I'm doing like the professional tutorial videos, I generally stick with a very simple type transition like a fade, fade through black. If I'm doing the music videos, then I'll play around with these other types of transitions that are like more obvious that you're transitioning from clip to clip. Behaviors are really cool because they're kind of like pre-made animations that you can add on text, pictures, or videos. I mainly use these on text because um, they give a cool effect and I, I've used, I've played around with these a lot in Arit's music videos when I'm having the lyrics pop up on the screen. Here in the animations tab you can zoom in or out while you're doing like a screencast tutorial. You can add custom animations. You can do cursor effects, so if you're, again, if you're teaching something, you can have it highlighted on the screen, have a yellow around it, have a clicking sound. You can also do basic audio editing. Now, it's not going to fix your audio if it's really bad. You need to make sure that you're using proper mic equipment so that it can help elevate the sound and make it better because if I was recording this right now without a microphone and then I go and try and use noise removal, it will help it but it will still sound bad because I didn't use a microphone. So because I'm using this microphone and when we usually record we make a point to use an external plug-in microphone because it really helps a lot when you add the noise removal. If you don't have any microphone and you try to do noise removal, it's not going to help it in the best way possible. So I would say that the audio effects are basic, more basic than other editing softwares, but it's good that they even actually have audio effects to add on the audio that you're recording. They also have a cool green screen effect where if you have a green screen behind you, you can remove that color and you know add a picture or add a video to make for more dynamic creative video. Now I will say that the green screen effect is also still basic and you really need to make sure that you have a lot of light while you're in front of a green screen and you don't necessarily need to be in front of a green screen it can be in front of a white background or a black background but it needs to be like a solid background green is just the the easiest one and although they have this effect and it's really cool you really need to make sure that you use a lot of light because if you don't then it doesn't remove all of the green and there might be still green while you're moving your hands or in between your hair so you need to make sure that you really have a lot of light so that you can remove it with uh, a clean effect so that you don't still see the residue of the green screen. Another cool thing is that you can do some basic color correction in that if your video is kind of dull and pale, you can add some color correction to make it more vibrant and more full in color. Now again, I will say that it's a cool feature that they have, but it's also at a basic level, so it's nothing to the extent of on Sony Vegas or on a Adobe Premiere Pro where you can really get in there and really change the color. When you alter the color, you alter everything as a whole, so you can't choose something specific. So if you have something on the side that you really want its own color, then you won't be able to alter that one thing, that one part, like let's say my shirt, I want it to be more vibrant, just my shirt. You won't be able to do that, It will. the color correction will happen on the entire video. Now that being said, having this feature on here is really cool and really neat. I use it a lot. In the previous version they didn't have it, so I much prefer it with this kind of thing happening with the color correction. So this software is really great if you are a YouTuber and you do tutorials and you, if you do gaming, if you do vlog type videos. I would say that this software works for the majority of people, but it, it won't work for you if you are creating like really big productions. So if you're like a channel that does high intense video editing, if you create commercials, high production stuff, you create films, movies, that type of thing, I would say that this is too basic for you and you need something more advanced. 
But for the majority of people, I would say that this software works very well. I recommend this software to all of the people who are getting started on YouTube, online teachers, people creating courses, just because it's very user friendly and it's very easy to use. And I personally have been using the software since 2011, back when I think the version that I had was Camtasia 7. And I've literally edited thousands and thousands of videos for our channels, REITs channels, clients, course videos. The list goes on and on and we use this software on a weekly basis. So that is my overview of Camtasia. For the most part, it can do everything that you want. It can record your screen, screencast recording, you as a webcam, it can deal with other types of footage. So if you have like a DSLR, GoPro, add text on the screen, add animations, transitions. The only thing is like, if you wanted to do like uh, more in-depth details, like like I have, how I mentioned the blur focus tracking, you can't do that. If you wanted to do like a rewind of your footage, you wouldn't be able to do that. Just little things that require more detail, you can't really do on the software, but for the most part, you can do it on the software. All right guys, so if you are interested in checking out this software, head down to the description below as I have the links for you guys to go into the Camtasia website, check out the software, and you can even try out a free 30-day trial. All right guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Back from the dead.